Let's talk more about these logistical challenges with Guy Platt, and he is the Secretary General of International Chamber of Shipping, joining us from Singapore. Guy, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Uh, and uh, on the back of the latest export numbers, of course, very timely that came out from China, uh, the ports there dealing with uh, the surge in Omicron and also a uh, potential closures ahead of the Lunar New Year period. Uh, we already expect them typically closing for as much as a month uh, to celebrate this holiday, but they could be closed even earlier. What type, what type of supply disruptions are you expecting to come out of China? Yeah, a little bit broken Guy, up there, but uh, I think I got the... the, the very broken up. I'm sorry. I, I think I can hear that. Got, got it. That said, yes. I think there's going to. We, we're anticipating a lot of disruption over the next month, with uh, some port closures, with congestion, uh, with the course of the lunar year coming up very shortly as well, and that uh, just has a knock-on effects to the overall supply chain, uh, coupled with uh, very difficulties in, in undertaking crew changes still throughout uh, Asia, uh, does exacerbate the, the the problems which we're going to encounter over the next few weeks or months. Can you talk to us, uh, apart from uh, the uh, difficulties that we're experiencing on land, uh, for those uh, seafarers, uh, the people on those ships and moving all the cargo ships around, uh, they're not considered essential workers. So without them, uh, we might have some difficulty getting all the cargo that we need shipped around, the medicines, the food that we rely on, uh, because they are not considered essential workers. So they're not getting vaccinated when they need to be, and then if they are infected, uh, some of the Ports are not allowing them to go on shore. Uh, can you detail and talk us through uh, some of the uh, difficulties that uh, these uh, cargo ships, the seafarers, are dealing with? I think you made a really interesting point. Yes, in some countries, they are considered key workers. And certainly the World Health Organization, International Labor Organization, considers uh, the transport workers, the seafarers, to be key workers and urging countries to uh, make that happen as well. We, 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 you know, it's not just seafarers; it's also land transport workers as well. And uh, we, we've been making representing the WHO to get some sort of yellow vaccine passport for our our seafarers as well. Vaccinations are running about 50% for seafarers. It needs to do a lot more. Uh, we need countries to to offer them and prioritise the seafarers because ultimately, as you say, it does uh, impact the ability to be able to change the crews out. And also, if uh, they do get infected, it, it, it just it throws up trade completely whilst the, the, the problems are sorted through. So we'd urge countries which haven't yet decided to make seafarers key workers to do so as soon as they possibly can to help with the congestion and the supply chain issues which have already been highlighted.